Good morning. Today is Tuesday, June 23rd. By the way, before I get into this chapter for today, we're reading from chapter 14, verse 31 to the end of chapter 15. Just want to remind you, tell everybody that this coming Sunday, my, 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 we have a guest speaker, someone you've never heard, never met. I've only met him and struck up a friendship on the phone. But oh my, does this brother have a word for us in the time we live. So just get ready for a special message this coming Sunday. So now verse 31 of chapter 14, they've crossed the Red Sea. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and Moses and in Moses, his servant. Then let's just scope it out. Verse chapter 15, then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. The first song we have them singing, and it takes up a good number of verses, verse through verse 18. And uh, then Miriam, the prophetess, she has a little song that only lasts a verse. Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. And then it says this, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea. They went to the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert, following the cloud, without finding water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? And then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it in the water, and the water became fit to drink. There's more to the chapter, but let's just dive into this. The Bible says that when they passed the Red Sea, crossed it, the people saw the power of God. They had already seen the glory of God. But these were people who didn't have faith in God in God, essentially. They just had faith that was spurred on by the last miracle they had to see. And when that miracle wore off, it was like, let me go back to Egypt. There are people like that today. They have great faith, but unfortunately it lasts for about 18 minutes. And then we go back to unbelief. So they believed in God, <laughs> albeit temporarily, but also they put their faith in Moses. Notice how the people at times would put their faith in Moses or trust him because God vindicated Moses. That's a word for any pastor watching today. The way God will hold us so that the people will trust us is not because we're perfect and not flawed, but because they sense God is with him. God is with her. That leader, God is with them. They're sincere. They're trying to do God's will. That's just a little sidebar for anyone in leadership, anyone over you. That goes for moms and dads too. You can't just be yelling at people and kids. You got to have them understand, I'm doing this because I love you and, and God now bear witness to my leadership. Well, then Moses and the folks had their first song. It was a big song back then. It was number like one on the list for a long time. The Song of Moses and of Israel. And you can read it. I don't want to go into that right now. But I do want to point out this. They never learned to sing when in trouble. They only sang when they saw the Red Sea open. Now, there's another good lesson. See, in the New Testament, Paul and Silas were in prison in Philippi in the book of Acts, and they sang at midnight in the prison. Why are you singing? Because the Lord is good. And we're doing his will. And Jesus died on the cross, and now we're suffering for, with him, for him. Oh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, creatures here below. So how are we when it comes to this? Do you only have a song when you get the raise, when the child gets healed or there's an answer to prayer? And then when hard times come, you not only don't have a song, you have a major grumble. We're going to read about grumbling coming up real soon. They grumble against Moses. And when you grumbled against Moses, you were grumbling against God. Not a good thing. So 
Now they're singing because they just got a miracle, but God wants us to sing all the time. In everything, give him thanks. Then Miriam had her song. And that's, by the way, the difference between Old Testament worship and New Testament worship. There's a lot of things they sang in the Psalms later uh, um, that we read in the Psalms, or even Miriam singing, that we wouldn't sing. Like, the horse and the rider he has thrown in the sea, i.e., and they were killed. Jesus never taught us to sing that way. In fact, we're to bless our enemies and love them that curse us. I was once preaching a lot of years ago in Duluth, Minnesota, and they got into that song, which was big back then, praise and worship song. Uh, they were singing everything from the Psalter and from the Old Testament. Some of it's very good and applies. Some of it is not so good. Like, uh, God... Uh, throw my enemies down slippery rocks and let their children's heads break open. Not the best song for Sunday morning. So they kept singing, the horse and the rider he's thrown in the sea, horse and the rider he's thrown in the sea. And I thought to myself, that has like no relationship to my life. I have a lot of needs and I want to praise the God, praise God, but I do not want him to throw any horse and rider in the sea. I want him to defeat the enemy in my life, but that's a spiritual enemy and he's not riding a horse. So now we go to another one of those strange circumstances. After they get done singing, they're led by the cloud to a place called Mara, where there's no water. And I should say, they go there, they come to Mara. They couldn't drink its water, my bad. They couldn't drink its water. They're going to get to another place with no water. But they get to Mara, and they couldn't drink it because it is bitter. And here we go again. A test. And now they're not singing anymore. Guess what? They're grumbling. So they were singing and then grumbling, grumbling and then singing. That was their, that was their, their, their history with God as they leave Egypt. One day, horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. Grumbling against Moses, God, what are you doing? You led us to this place. It's bitter waters. It's not easy here. You ever taste some of this stuff? Oh, I want to mature so that I can be like what James says. Count it all joy when you come into all kinds of trials and tribulation. How about you? I'm not there yet. I want to get there, though. I want God to work in me so that I'm not like the Israelites, singing at victories and grumbling in hardship. Isn't he, wait a minute, isn't he the same God? Did he change? The God that opened the Red Sea, isn't he God that led us, permitted them to get to Marah where the water was bitter? And he has an answer. He wants to show his power again. He wants to show you that bitter situations can become sweet. Moses throws a piece of wood in the water and miraculously it is now sweet and they're drinking. I wonder if they were shamed when they were drinking the sweet water and saying, man, our bad Moses, our bad. We were just grumbling, wanting to go back to Egypt, like, sorry, this water's so good. How is that? How is it with us? Are we yo-yo Christians or are we solid? Oh, I've met some real solid Christians in my own congregation and through my life, ministers, missionaries, oh my, like a rock, like a rock. They're praising God every day. You would even not know what they're going through. Others, we wore our... We wear our heart on our sleeve, and you know within you know, 15 seconds, something's wrong, lost our joy, not praising God, why? And we're going through Mara. We're going through something bitter. Come on, God permitted it. We're gonna grow up. Our faith is gonna get stronger, and we'll be able to tell people, God can take sour situations and make them sweet. So be it, Lord, amen.